you for being here. Yeah, no problem. Glad to be here. Um, one second, more so. Sure. Um, I'd like to thank you all for uh, being here and listening to me, as well as anyone watching, one of my friends or family watching on, uh, on TV right now. Hey, Mom, I'm on TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, about a few weeks ago, we did our senior capstone projects, and it was a, a pretty stressful time. Um, so I'm glad to be doing it again under less pressure, I should say. Um, Mr. Wardell got to attend my first, uh, my first presentation, and he uh, really liked it, and then uh, offered uh, for me to do it here. So I'd love to talk to you today about the uh, film creation process and cinematography. Um, so without further ado, let's begin. Um, this right here is a picture of us on set, actually at uh, a Mista restaurant in uh, Kittery, out, out by the outlets. Um, so, uh, starting off, what is uh, cinematography? What, what does it mean? And the textbook definition of cinematography is the art of making motion pictures. But that, those six words are simplified beyond belief. I'm going to go over with you mostly of like everything you can think of that has to do with cinematography. I will be going kind of quick because I have a lot um, to get through. I have a watch to make sure I don't go over time. <laughs> um, and uh, so just kind of hold your questions for the end. Um, so I made an essential question for my uh, capstone, and that was how can I create a professional and quality film that provokes emotion and thought into the viewer through the use of effective editing and uh, cinematography along with the guidance of the script. So I'm going to break that down for you just to simplify it. And um, professional like quality in the film is my goal, um, what I was trying to do. My uh, uh, effective editing and cinematography, that's what I was researching, what I would be learning about during the time uh, uh, before I actually had my presentation. And finally, um, my collaboration was the guidance of a script, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, starting off, I'd like to say, or I'd like to address why I chose film for my uh, capstone. And one of the reasons is because I really just like making videos. Over the past year, I've produced over 30 videos for my YouTube channel. Um, and over, over time, they became more cinematic and more film-esque, uh, should, I should say. Um, I started my Mainly Living and Colorado Living series, and um, I started getting into short films, and actually one of mine got second place in the Main Outdoor Film Festival. I lost the first by four votes, but... Um, yeah, um, there'll be more of those, trust me. Um, but I would come to realize that there's a big difference between video production and film production. Um, so starting out in December of 2016, Amelia Laurie, a fellow student and peer of mine, um, approached me and asked me if she would help her with a scholarship film um, for, you know, a scholarship for one of her colleges. And I said, uh, yeah, because I had the equipment and not really many other people did. And um, I thought it'd be fun. So um, I, here's some pictures from that, uh, that uh, video that we made. And it wasn't, it was, it was okay, but it wasn't, it wasn't at all any good. I had no idea what I was doing, really. You can see the lighting right here is all off. The, uh, I wasn't following any of the cinematography rules that you should follow. It was, it was too dark. I was trying to film it in the day and edit it later. It just didn't work out. And I, I just didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of uh, drove me later on to this capstone. And she actually asked me, hey, you want to just do a collaborative capstone? And we went to Mr. Waddell. And we, uh, she had written a script. And then I was going to do all the uh, editing. Uh, camera work, and uh, that's what we ended up doing. Um, so I'm going to, this is kind of a knowledge check of what I felt I knew before I did this project, and I rated myself a 7 out of 10 for editing and a 5 out of 10 for, um, for film knowledge. And I, I was pretty confident in my abilities because I've been working with a video production for about two years, but in reality, looking back, it was probably more like this. I didn't know anything about film, and my editing wasn't as uh, proficient as I had thought. But I would like to say, after this project, I do believe it's around here, um, eight and a seven, uh, and I'm going to be going over, you know, everything that went into that and how I feel, how I got there. Um, so our film building process went from December 2016 to May 2017. Um, and I'm going to be going over uh, the research that I put into figuring out this, uh, this capstone project and how, to, and how to do it. And um, I'm going to be breaking that down into three different parts, pre-production, production, and post-production, and also breaking those down into how they, uh, 
had to do with my mentor's help um, for the project and uh, went into the final product. Um, so let's start with pre-production. So pre-production timeline looks um, something like this. When you have a film idea and it goes up until when uh, production begins. And this can really last as long as you want. For example, uh, James Cameron making the Avatar film in 2009. He had an idea for 15 years but didn't have the technology, technological means to create the movie. So he had an idea, he wrote it, but um, had to wait a very long time to actually start production. But, um, and every kind of production or pre-production timeline looks different along with all the other timelines. But this is kind of how we went through it. Um, we wrote a script, we created a shot list, we got a cast and crew, and then we got our equipment. Um, and uh, I have a little quote underneath there from my mentor, and it says, there is no room for creativity during filming. It's too diff difficult for the cinematographers and the director. Um, and the most freedom and creativity you will have will be before production begins, so you should plan ahead. And I took, I took that quote very seriously when doing my research and planning for production because I wanted to get everything uh, uh, right and we also limited on time, so I wanted to make sure we could get everything done. Um, and so when we uh, started script, or after the script was completed, I was a total of 84 pages long. Um, just spoiler, we didn't finish the film. But, uh, <laughs> uh, it, we went through and I read through it and uh, we split it up into sections per character and then scenes and then um, grouped those scenes by location so we could plan ahead. And we didn't film any of the scenes in order because of uh, the availability and time limitations. And that's what they actually do on set a lot of times. And I did a lot of, a lot of research into uh, trying to figure out what the best way to do that was. Um, and then we moved into, I moved into shot listing, and shot listing is listing your shots that you want to take um, before you actually film. Um, and I didn't really know much about this, I'd done a little bit of this before, but not anything in, as in depth, and this is how they actually do it on a real set. On a real set. Um, and so I shot listed on a separate document, eventually I kind of moved into just writing it on the script because I was limited on of time. Um, but I'm going to be going over shots. Uh, uh, shots with you from films because you need to, to shot list, you need to know all about shots and like what kind of shot you, you want and how you want to see it to look. So um, let's just start with a simple wide shot. A wide shot is a wide shot. It's pulled out and you can see your environment, you can see your characters. Um, that's Carly and Sam, two of our actors, and we were at Fort McClary and so you can kind of, it was kind of the shot was moving upwards um, and you can see the whole landscape and kind of gives you a sense of feel of environment. And then you can um, pull it into your uh, your actor, a single actor or multiple actors. This is a full shot. Um, a full shot uh, includes your, your actor's entire body. Usually it's standing up. In this case, she uh, Amelia was sitting down. Um, but it's above your head to below your feet, so it gets the full body shot. And you can pull in and you can do a mid shot after that. This is Josephine, freshman. She was uh, acting in our film. And a, f a mid shot goes from your waist to the top of your head. Um, and you can go even closer, and you can do a medium close-up shot, which goes from your about your uh, your chest to the top of your head. It varies a little bit, but that's usually uh, about what a medium close-up shot looks like. And then you can go even closer for uh, the more facial expression kind of shot, which is a close-up, and goes from the bottom to the top of your head. Um, and then, we didn't use this in our film, but you can go even closer with an extreme close-up shot. This is from The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. And if you need to get that, you know, uh, sweat of the brow kind of reaction, then that's what that would be used for. Um, and then moving on to a little separate note, we have angles, and angles can be adjusted throughout the film. This is a Dutch angle where you actually take your camera and rotate it. Um, this is a shot from Thor, and if we adjust it so it's more uh, straight, it kind of doesn't have the same feel as before. Um, it, when, it, when it's tilted, it gives more gravity to the shot, kind of like his hammer is flying at him more of than it's just coming towards him. Uh, so that's what Dutch angles are used for. And then you have a low angle, which kind of gives you more of an overpowering sense of uh, character. And this is a low angle that we're having while Killian, uh, another actor of ours, is lifting weights. Um, and also gives you kind of a different uh, perspective of the environment, um, as well as high angles, which give you a different perspective from above. Um, and it's also good for some fighting scenes that, these, uh, that you can see. Um, and. Uh, there's also over-the-shoulder shots. Over-the-shoulder shots are very common in dialogue. Dialogue is common in most uh, films and TV shows, and you're gonna see these most commonly because uh, it gives you um, kind of a 
sense of spatial awareness with your characters. Switching back and forth, you can see the shoulder of one character, or you can see the face and reaction of another character. Um, so moving from the shots, we have our uh, kind of what our cast and crew looked like, kind of what a set looked like. This set was a little crammed because we were inside a car. Um, but we have our cast, Kelly and Killian, then our boom guy, John, who uh, we carried the boom around for uh, recording the audio, and then uh, me and Amelia kind of controlling every, every aspect of the scene that we wanted and viewing it. Um, actually, at one point, this was so crowded, we had to get some people out of the car so we could, and let them do it. Um, but you can kind of see I had the, uh, the clapper with us so we could sync up the audio and whatnot. And we have, on the side, I have a list of all of our uh, actors and uh, crew. Um, and then I have a list of all our equipment. I couldn't bring it all today like I did at the Capstone because some of it I don't have anymore. Um, uh, starting off, we have the Sony uh, 4K camera, which is right there actually right now. Um, uh, DJI Osmo, which has a gimbal. It's very uh, it's a stable camera. It was, was lent to me by my mentor very uh, graciously, and I, I appreciate that a lot because I, uh, it helps me get a lot of the shots I wanted. Um, then we have my GoPro um, that actually so this is the Osmo, this is the GoPro, and then I have, um, I brought, I had two tripods, um, we had lights, we had uh, um, uh, the boom right here. Now the boom is pretty special because it has, you can hold it out pretty far, I'm trying to get your, uh, your actor's uh, audio as clear as possible. And this little thing on the end of the microphone is called a dead cat because it looks like a dead cat. Um, it's for wind resistance, so if you're kind of like, you know, if you kind of rub on the microphone, that's or a wind would be blowing into the microphone, it doesn't sound good. And that's any of the squishy stuff you see on microphones. This is more for wind outside. So if you're filming outside, it's very helpful. Um, and then we had a headset for the uh, for the boom and a clapper, so we could sync up audio. And so the total cost would, uh, would have been around two thousand one hundred ninety-one dollars if I had paid for everything. Um, obviously, some of these things I already had, and some of these things. Um, were lent to me, so I really appreciated that. Um, but I mean, on a real set, you'd have something like this, which I wish we had, this is a red camera. Um, unfortunately, it was slightly out of our budget. <laughs> um, but you know, maybe one day. <laughs> um, so moving from pre-production, we have production. And the production timeline is simply when pre-production ends and when post-production uh, begins. So um, how uh, we kind of handled our production is we would have line readings and setup, usually around the same time. That way I could set up while Amelia was practicing with the actors. Then we'd film it, we'd tear down, and we would repeat. And um, something I learned was that uh, the job of the cinematographer is to make the shot look how they want it. Well, the job of the director and writer is to make sure the actors and the story flow throughout the film. So there's kind of two separate jobs here. And um, the, it's said that the cinematographer has the second most creative freedom on set. So that's something I had in mind. Um, and I'm gonna be going over the composition of a shot, which is how a shot looks, like visually. And that's also, besides the angles and such of a shot, it's also something you have to take into account um, when filming. And so the first one is the most well-known, and this is the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds splits your screen up into nine different sections. And uh, you want this is you want to have your points of interest along those lines um, going through, as you can see on the screen, um, because it's what naturally your eye is attracted to based on the um, Fibonacci spiral, which is a mathematical equation for uh, symmetry and what um, looks most pleasing to the eye. Then we have something called looking room, which is. Um, basically just the looking room from where your actor is to the edge of frame. And the rule of thumb for this is a uh, two-third, one-third split, which is following the rule of thirds. Um, and then along with that, you have headroom, which is from the top of the actor's head to the edge of frame. And generally, you don't want to cut off their head in a shot, um, so uh, that you usually kind of want to keep their full, if you're especially in a full shot, their full um, body in frame. And then something else besides just lining up the shot is contrast. As you can see in this shot, we have Amelia and her face is being lit up by a laptop. And uh, it makes you, it visually pulls you into her face. And you can see her reaction and her body. And you don't really focus on the outside of the shot. And so that's another thing you want to take into account when filming her. Um, and movement and framing are also really important. Uh, this is something a little different. This is the 
uh, the 180 degree rule is something that is very important with spatial awareness. And it states that if you have three cameras, you're filming a wide and two over the shoulder shots, you never want the two cameras to, sw the, the over the shoulder shots to switch over, the, to go across that line. Because then if you have your actor on like the right side of frame and then you switch and go back, they're gonna be on the left side of frame. And that's gonna screw with the viewer's like uh, spatial awareness. And it's gonna, it's gonna look choppy and it's not gonna look good. So you never wanna, that's something you never wanna break. There's a few other rules like that, but I'm not going to get into the specifics on that. Um, so now on to post-production. Post-production timeline is when, post, or is when uh, production ends and once the film is completed. Um, this is probably the most differing for each film because each film needs different post-production. Some films are very heavy on visual effects. Some are not. Like We had a coming-of-age film, so we, wouldn't, we didn't have as much visual effects, but we had a lot of um, just cuts and... Uh, audio adjustments um, and this process can be approached in many ways but if you have followed your script very well and you've mastered production then you will have an easier time in post-production. Um, I'm going to show a behind the scenes preview of me editing and kind of what goes into editing a shot um, but I want to go over a few things I thought were important and um, so this is data wrangling statistics. Um, data wrangling is getting your uh, audit or your files from your camera onto your timeline when editing. Um, and so it took about, we had a prior of around, or actually no, we did have around, uh, around five hours and 18 minutes of raw footage. Um, it took about 40 hours of shooting and 40 hours of editing. This um, is an approximate, es this is an estimate, but it, I guarantee you it was around that, maybe even more. Um, and that turned into two minutes and, or sorry, 12 minutes and 38 seconds of screen time. Um, and took up 137 gigabytes of storage. Um, so the you're working with a lot of stuff, and that's editing. Actually, I found was took a long, a lot longer than I expected um, because there was more that went into it. And the software I used was Sony Vegas Pro 14, um, RX2 by Isotope, which is audio repair, and then Mocha Pro, which is for uh, stabilizing some shots. And then my hardware, I have four screen set up at home with some fancy stuff. <laughs> many of you probably don't care about, but <laughs> uh, just I had a lot of power going into this, um, enough that I could uh, run all the things I needed. Um, so I'm going to show you behind the scenes uh, video of me editing, and I'm going to kind of narrate this and what I'm doing. Um, so this is one of our scenes. I'm going to show you before and after at the end of this. And it's going to show you me finding correct uh, footage right here, because we had like seven shots for this one shot. <coughs> And then I was pl placing that on the timeline um, and making sure everything was correct. And then we got secondary audio from the uh, mic. And so I had to sync that up with the actual audio. So it would, uh, you could get the good audio at the same time. And that's why I use the clapper for it, so you can sync it up. And then I repaired the audio because there were some like bangs on the door that were too loud and kind of hurt your ears. So I reduced those a little bit right there. And then um, after I repaired the audio, I went on to correcting the framing of the shot, and sometimes even though you can try to frame a shot right, it doesn't come out perfect. So I added the black bars, which made it more cinematic, and then I adjusted it, the rotation, tried to center it more. And then I actually um, did something called keyframing, where I had it move over the course of time, um, and you'll see that in just a second. As like time went on, I had the shot kind of move, so it would more be more stable and look better. And then I moved on to color grading, making the shot um, look more cinematic in post-production. And I'm gonna zoom in just a moment um, to show you how I kind of adjusted this. There was this one thing with the Osmo that made the scene more blue, so I did a technique to get rid of it. Um, it's gonna pull in in just a second. There you go. Um, and then, so you can kind of see, it's kind of hard to see on the projector, but I'm pulling out some of that blue and making it more, uh, or less blue and more red, give more, uh, fleshy feel to your um, your uh, actors. And then um, after the color grading, um, should end in a moment. Uh, you can still see I'm trying to make it more cinematic. After the color grading, it was, it's any other, any other visual effects you want, and then rendering. So rendering was just turning that video on the timeline into a file, which I could use to upload to YouTube or show you guys. So I'm gonna show you before and then after. So pay attention to how it looks and how it sounds. You can't really hear much of the shot. So on the Osmo, this is what um, we were filming on. The 
audio picked up by it isn't very great. Shit, you scared me. Sorry, I just... Bye. I'm going to show you afterwards, and it's going to look a bit different. If it was color graded, you're going to hear it better. Bye. Bye. Shit, you scared me. Sorry, I just. Bye. Bye. That's okay. Time to stick it right. <laughs> <laughs> a little uncomfortable for actors, <laughs> but it uh, came out. It came out pretty uh, good, I think. Um, and so I'm gonna go over kind of in conclusion, looking back on the whole project, what I've learned and experienced. And um, first of all, I want to give a huge shout out to my mentor. Uh, he helped me. His name is Brandon Maxam. He helped me out a lot. He gave me advice on the script. He gave me advice on how to shot list properly. Um, he gave me suggestions for what equipment to use. He gave me equipment to use, and yeah, he was he was just really helpful overall with everything. I would send him like um, pictures of our of our locations beforehand. He'd be like, "Do this with the lighting." Da, da, da. He does lighting work in film, so I'm actually I might have the chance to go work with him on set during the summer, um, which would be pretty awesome. And um, and then he gave feedback on once the scenes were completed, maybe how to adjust it more. Really helpful. Um, and then I kind of answered my essential question, um, and I kind of gave the answer uh, with proper preparation and knowledge on set. A cinematographer has the opportunity to create a film that not only meets the director's desires, but also their own. However, this can only be achieved by, uh, with a lot of focus and dedication. And I added that last statement because not that I wasn't focused or dedicated, I was super fo focused and dedicated. It's just we were working with, um, we were working with uh, like two production members and like a bunch of cast members who were all seniors and all had their own caps on store. <laughs> so they're like, ah, I'm not really sure I can come in. Like, please, and be like, ah, maybe. Um, so it was, it was kind of hard to work with a small production, and um, I have said in the past I would like to continue working on the project if we had a bigger production, and et cetera. It's just very hard, during, especially during the school year. Um, and we, actu we actually were working on this from December to May instead of just the two months that we were given kind of to focus on the product. So it was a big, it was a big project. I mean, we did get a lot of it done, um, and I'm happy with how it turned out. And I'm going to show you uh, two scenes, um, so I guess without further ado. No, Eve. I know it's cold outside, but I think a skirt would be best. Or maybe a dress. I don't really know. Wait, wait, wait. I think he's texting me. I'll call you back in a sec. What did you do? You're better off without him. Keegan is bad news. Did you say something to him? I just told him how our dad is a cop and our mom's a lawyer and how they would love to know about him and their very underage daughter. Wake up. What is wrong with you? Mark, he didn't even know enough about you to realize that I was lying. He does this every year. He preys on some freshman, and then he laughs about it with his friends. Trust me, I was doing you a favor. You don't know that. Marley. Despite what you may think, Adrian, you don't actually know everything. Maybe that's why you didn't get into Dartmouth. Get out. I was just leaving. So what you saw in that shot right there, at the, uh, the start, it was... Uh, our actor Joe Josephine was, um, the, or the character in the film was wanting to go out with. She's a freshman, wanted to go with the senior. And so you're in that situation where, um, 
her older sister was saying that's a bad idea. Um, and got, and they were, I was trying, one of the hardest things, I, and something I spent a lot of time on is trying to figure out the best way to portray texting in a film. This is something that a lot of uh, cinematographers have, and editors have tried to figure out. And this is kind of called the Sherlock method because the TV show Sherlock did something similar to that where they had uh, the text appear next to the phone. And I did motion tracking to follow the, uh, the text of the phone. So it, it came out pretty well. And um, uh, then I moved on to uh, more of a dialogue shot where um, uh, I was using the over the shoulder stuff and the 180 degree roll as I was talking about and um, having this three camera set up going back and forth and it made a good conversation, <coughs> something that could be followed by the, by, by the viewer. And so the next shot um, I'm going to show you is a little bit different. Take a left up here. Okay. So where are we going? The florist. My mom's a wedding planner. Really? I didn't know that. Pierce and Susanna. Come on, I thought it was romantic. It's not. I don't even know why you came here with me. It's weird. Sorry. Our flowers are ready. If this wasn't what you wanted, you should have said something. It's fine. It's not. God, you can't even stand up for yourself. Bye, Jackie. Bye. So, uh, what you saw in that shot is um, car scenes, which are a little more difficult to film, but we uh, handled it well. And then um, the fire shop scene, um, which uh, I had, I tried to get something. It was kind of hard because we had in the beginning kind of a longer shot where they walk in. And there was a lot of movements involved, so it took a lot of shots. And then the <laughs> the walking down shot of the uh, aisle took about ten takes trying to get it just right. Um, but uh, everything kind of turned out good. And it, something you may not have picked up because the projector is um, a little inaccurate with depicting colors um, is the scene got darker as it went on, kind of more uh, emphasizing the mood of the shot, and it got more blue. And so that's something also that uh, color grading does to your shot. It makes it gives feeling and emotion into your shots. Um, so uh, I have my work cited right here, uh, all the stuff I used to figure this all out. And then um, two links. Um, the first link goes to my uh, playlist of all of my um, all of the prom scenes or. Uh, all of the, I've been working on a prom video. Uh, <laughs> some of my life lately. Um, all of the capstone scenes that uh, we were able to finish and edit, um, not all of them have been edited, 
Um, and I might throw some more up there. But they're all uh, they're all in order on, and then those behind the scenes videos. There's also another one on there, um, and everything is like not bleeped out. So if you desire to hear them swear, then you can go there. <laughs> um, and then the second link goes to my YouTube channel, which you can check out any of my other work. Um, I was uh, I was pushed to show a preview of the prom video I've been working on that should be out by the end of the week. Um, and I have 30 seconds of that. Um, uh, so that's coming, I'm gonna say Friday. <laughs>
So I um, usually I discover that in editing um, on a real set. You probably want to review that during. Um, but it was just kind of I had to balance the whole what we had versus um, what I was trying to do, and that was that was like throughout the entire process. So from editing to shooting, and whatnot. How did you connect with your mentor? Uh, my mentor Brandon. He was um, he I. <laughs> I actually uh, Skyped him the first when I first started talking. He was in Thailand for a, a film. I actually have not met him in person. I would like to. Um, he Skyped in a bunch. Um, he Skyped in my presentation. I talked to him. I'd email him. I had like, I have, for my presentation, I printed out all the emails. So we went back and forth. It was like this giant stack back and forth. Um, we So it was mostly digital that we, it was either email or I'd Skype him and talk to him and ask him something. He was really quick in responding. Um, and, uh, he had even if he didn't have the answer he was always working with someone on set so they would they knew something about like that certain subject so mostly it was it was all skyping and email but how did you find he existed well, how did you find he existed gotcha um he uh one of my miss landers my english teacher she uh they've been like they were friends when they were teenagers and they've been friends throughout and so she heard i was doing a project about cinematography and directed me towards him so i got his contact info emailed him and he was super cooperative and helped me out a lot. And you mentioned you may work with him this summer? You're uh, hopeful? He emailed me after my casting presentation. He said that he would um, he would love to have me on set as a, a PA, which is a production assistant, on in Western Mass in August. And it's um, a horror film, I believe. So uh, I'd be doing just to help out work and stuff. I'm not sure if it would be an internship, if I get paid or not, or whatnot. Um, but even being on set would be pretty cool. So I'm, it's unsure. I'm not sure how my schedule and his schedule looks like, but that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. Great. You've definitely shown like a huge level of commitment, not just in your capstone, but just like your yeah. day to day YouTube videos. <laughs> I remember the video that I was in, the Switch video. Yeah. Um, that was fun. We, I got home from filming at like 12 30 and around 7.30 the next morning, he texted me saying that he just finished editing and had stayed up for like 36 hours straight. I have a at, gift at that point. and I don't have to sleep much. It's, <laughs> it's very helpful. Um, I, yeah, that was super fun. Cole helped me participate in uh, a film for a video game launch thing. We're, 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 we're real big nerds. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I did that all night. Send it to you, and then fell asleep to play video games. <laughs> yeah. Any anyway. questions? All right. Thank um, you so much. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Check out uh, my other videos. So I'll be posting stuff this summer. Hopefully more uh, short films. Uh, thank you for letting me talk so thank long. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna tear down now. Sure. Yeah.